This program is brought to you by Emory University.
else, uh, you know, it's just a chance to warm up the fingers a little bit, you know. Um, now we're going to play something fast, you know. <laughs> you know it's, uh, it's nice to start with a good old Scottish rump through A major. Uh, it's very exhilarating. And uh, so that was a, a long medley of Scottish melodies, starting out with a pipe march and going through two spades and then uh, two reels. And uh, I used to name all the, the tunes in these long medleys. I kind of gave up on that because it's just like uh, nobody remembered them anyway. And it's like then the, the concert went on for an hour longer. It was like, uh, and even I would forget all the different tunes. But And then I'd also get people coming backstage saying, um, well, you, you mentioned five titles, but I only heard one song. You know, <laughs> but that's the, the Celtic way, of course, to make these long medleys. So that was some Scottish music. And uh, that's mostly what we're going to be doing over the next uh, 70 or so minutes, but um, we're also going to do some, some music from Brittany and Ireland and, and uh, Shetland and so forth. But um, anyway, that was David Brown on guitar. How about it? Really great, right? Yeah, yeah David's really great. He's, uh, he's really into uh, sort of uh, homesteading and uh, Sus uh, like uh, like uh, survival type skills, and uh, so he'll show you how to build a log cabin out of just a army Sw a Swiss Army knife, and that's it. You know, it's nothing else. Uh, very uh, minimalist there. <laughs> Great guy, good friend. And uh, this is E.J. Jones on small pipes, and this is a Scottish small pipe. For our next number, uh, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is um, going to do a little medley here of a six-eight march and some jigs, and uh, it's a really unique challenge to to play with a piper and try and match exactly because there's all this um, filigree, you know, it's like tons of ornaments all over the place. And uh, so at first, I was a little bit bewildered, you know, it's like, um, why are they doing so much filigree? You know, it's like maybe it's to cover up the any mistake because you wouldn't know, is it, is it an ornament or is it a mistake? Uh, who, who knows? Um, but then, you know, you, you listen to it for a while. Oh, oh, that was a mistake. But E.J. doesn't make any, it's me that's making the mistakes, you know. And uh, so this is a 6-8 march and uh, three jigs. The, uh, the first two, the, the middle one of the jigs, is a slip jig or, or a lilt, as you'd call it in, in Scottish music. And, um, and then the final one is a, a tune that I wrote.
charming friend Rosalind Buda, who's just back from the New England Conservatory, not on bagpipes, actually, on bassoon. She's going to play a bit of that for you later, but this is another, another uh, set of Scottish small pipes. And, uh, and uh, Rosalind Buda is actually presently my housemate, which is kind of cool. You know, it's like, oh, she's practicing. I better get back to practicing, too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's, it's the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, oh, wow, she sounds good. Oh, I'm lagging behind. Oh, it's like a friendly competition. Yeah.
Thank you. So not long ago, I visited Orkney for the first time. I've been to Scotland lots, different uh, tours and that kind of thing, and uh, never had a chance to go to Orkney. But um, I got a gig, and that's usually how I end up traveling places. Is, uh, oh, there's a gig. Oh, good. I'm going to wherever. And uh, I'm going to Orkney this time. So I happened to be over in Edinburgh uh, playing for the Scots Fiddle Festival, which is kind of premier festival, really fancy chandeliers, big old uh, draperies and and portraits of dead people with wigs and that sort of thing and um, really really great fun and uh, all the big gunners were there it was all the all the Martin Hayes and you know sort of Shugal Nifty and all the big bands and um, so then from there I uh, went on a seven hour train ride it was very much sort of like trains planes and automobiles so seven hours to get to the very top of Scotland overnight in the hotel then three hours on a ferry to get to the mainland of Orkney then rented a car and drove two hours to get on the other side of the mainland of Orkney got on a plane and then went out to the very furthest island of Orkney just way way up in the North Sea um, it's a stormy, wild place it's just a hunk of rock completely flat hunk of rock in the middle of the sea there's not a tree anywhere and uh, they have a, a very special kind of sheep there. They're known as the seaweed-eating sheep. You know, because like that, there was never really enough arable land to both let sheep graze and raise their oats and barley. So then they banished the sheep to the beaches and um, built stone walls, because that's all they have there is rock, right? And so, the, and so then the, it keeps the sheep out on the beach. And I, I, I really wanted to see these famous sheep, because you know, I'm thinking like, well, are they green? You know, and uh, so it's like, uh, uh, it's terribly, like, fantastically windy. Like, even when the plane landed on this, on this dirt airstrip, you know, it, it didn't land sort of like straight as you would expect. We landed sideways, you know, it's, whoa. And uh, so I'm out on the beach with my camera, and it's like fantastically windy, and it's like blur, and I couldn't get any good pictures, but I saw the seaweed eating sheep, and then went and uh, dined on mutton. And I'm thinking, well, does this taste like fish, you know, or something? And uh, no, it tastes like mutton, you know, it's like normal. But um, anyway, I, I said, you know, I, I did it. And I got the nice uh, stocking cap. And when I went to school in Canada, everyone called them a toque. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But anyways, uh, out, of, out of heavy wool and, uh, and freezing like five layers on all the time, you know. Um, and I uh, played a wonderful gig there. And then while I was on, on Orkney, I saw all those uh, Neolithic sites, the the Scarabre and the, all the standing stone circles, 5,000 years old, you know, predates Stonehenge by 1,500 years, really fantastic. And um, so I got to thinking about, you know, sort of the, uh, the cold weather type of tunes. And uh, there, there's a, actually a, a cold weather tune that's going to be featured on Sunday as part of the string quartet that many of you are going to stick around in here. And it's called De Day Dawn. And uh, so I thought I'd play that, you know. And, um, and a few other cold weather tunes come to mind, too, you know. Um, there's the uh, Abbott's Bromley Horn Dance, that great Morris dance, you know, and they take the horns off the church wall once a year and do a dance that has kind of an impaling motion in the, in the dance. Uh, and then they, then they put the horns back on the wall, and then next year, same thing. And, uh, and then there's um, another one, Round About Our Coal Fire. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so, and it's actually, that was the first time that I... I was in front of a coal fire because I, I, you know, I was raised a, a city boy, <laughs> I guess, and um, so in a very smelly business. That coal—I don't know if any of you have ever heated your home with coal, but it's a—it's not nice. So um, I'm going to play "De Day Dawn." "De Day Dawn" is actually traditionally a, a Christmas-oriented or solstice-oriented tune, and the tradition has it that there, there would be a local fiddler that would go around door to door playing this on Christmas morning. Um, and you have a fantastic uh, sporting event there on Christmas called the Ba, which is like a big ball game. It's kind of like a big scrimmage, and, and it's like whoever has it, it's just like, kill him! You know, like the whole city is out just like frantically trying to get this ball, and uh, it's, it's crazy, wild, tough. You know, it's like, it draws blood, you know. But these are uh, ferocious, tough people, and uh, you'd have to be, right, to su survive in this fierce climate. So um, before I played Today Dawn, I just wanted to show you this beautiful poem that I heard from an Orkney poet named George Mackay Brown. We are gathered all in a green fable, and we fare from early plow and daffodil sun through a revel of wind-tossed oats and barley 
past sickle and flail to harvest home and the circles of bread and ale at the long table. It is told this story. We and sun and earth and corn are one. Now kings and shepherds have come. A wintry hovel hides a glory that is purer than snowflake or silver or star.
uh, uh, sit down for this one. And uh, don't worry, uh, I, I do have spandex on underneath my kilt. <laughs> Yeah, people are like, oh no, oh no, ah, don't look. Where are they? Jamie, keep your knees together. Ah. <laughs> and uh, I used to have a second instrument that I carried around with me in a double fiddle case. It's ready to go for this purpose. I'm tuning into a tuning that they often call hurdy gurdy tuning. Now, not far from here in Brasstown, North Carolina. There's, a, uh, there's George Kalashek. He has uh, built and sold <laughs> 1,600 hurdy-gurdies. Uh, who knew that there was that much market? And I, I really am thrilled with that because we have um, a lot of great craftsmen in North Carolina. That's where I, I live in Asheville. So. And uh, this violin was made in North Carolina. And we also have one of the world's best makers of Scottish small pipes, and that's our very own EJ. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, lots of great craftsmen. But, you know, times get tough, so I had to sell the second instrument. You sell off all your, your stuff, you know. Keep the music on the road, you know. So, uh. I once saw a Herman cartoon. I showed a a street musician, you know, with a case out and just a bow, kind of doing this, you know, it's like <laughs> uh, saving for a violin, you know, that's <laughs> kind of comes down to that, really. So um, this is going to be music from Quebec. Long tradition of foot tapping in Quebec. And uh, feel free to tap along if you like. Seems that everybody, you know, it's not enough to do pyrotechnics with your hands, no. And, and now we're getting our, both our feet going too, but um, it's just the way they, they do up there. Mm. Anyway, so for those of you who are musicians here, the tuning from the bottom up, it goes A flat, D flat, A flat, E flat. People ask, uh, well, so how do you keep track of all those flatted notes? I, I don't know, I just wiggle my fingers around, it sounds good, you know. <laughs> it's not like I'm like the transposing every, everything I do. But it gets that nice dark drony thing, I love it. And let's just hear your A chord if I may. a selection from my brand new CD, which, by the way, I have to plug my, my new CD because uh, it's one of five nominees for Best World Traditional Album with the IMA coming up in uh, July, and you can vote. <laughs> so you go to my website and you see a button there, and you can, you can actually have, you know, have a say. And uh, so this is called the Hurdy Gurdy Reel.
comrades back here. I'm going to do one more before taking a little bit of an intermission, which I guess you've already had one of. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, see, I, I suppose the, in theory we'd be offering our CDs for sale, but uh, that, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen somehow. But uh, if, if it doesn't quite happen for the intermission, we'll have them all during the weekend. And uh, yeah, it's going to happen. Okay, let's have, by, by golly, it's going to happen. Yeah, yes. okay, there we go. So there's a table right there by the back door. And uh, like harp players, I suppose. You know, you know, you spend your half your life tuning and the other half playing out of tune. You know. So, um, it's a uh, uh, return to some Scottish music, of course, and uh, it's a MSR, meaning March, Straspe, and Real. Ending with a fabulously wonderful tune called The High Drive by Gordon Duncan. Died, unfortunately, about three years ago, and, uh, and was one of the best tunesmiths in, in addition to being a virtuoso Highland bagpiper. So we'll just take a break, bit of a break and uh, hopefully meet a few of you, and then we'll see you in about 15 minutes.
The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.